Well, it seems as if I have been foiled by logging test gear because this Backups Pro 1400VA seems to actually be working just fine. I found it might be strange that uh, it would have an issue like this because this is a unit that I have checked before and I've replaced all the capacitors in it and I've done a proper inspection and made sure that it operates as it should. So I dug into it and found no real broken parts. I also dug into, or well, I mostly dug into this 1400VA Smart GPS which had somewhat similar measurements although not as not quite as bad and this one doesn't have any problems whatsoever not that I can find anyway and this one doesn't even have replaced caps so I decided to hook it up and do some measurements with this fancy little thing a one of these super popular rival DS 1052s uh, that I got from a friend a while back when he upgraded his scope and uh, it pretty much gave us the exact same reading as we're seeing right now so let me pull you through it so this is the main waveform our 50 Hz uh, high voltage output and it is perfectly clean and we also I've also used the somewhat limited but uh, somewhat useful uh, FFT function built into this scope and we're looking at uh, uh, DB decibel volts uh, uh, on the x-axis and uh, so we're exaggerating our noise floor in order to spot any noise or distortion signals and well this looks just fine we're looking at up between I think it's between 50 and 12 and a half kilohertz 50 hertz and 12 and a half kilohertz and it's entirely clean that's really nothing to worry about in this waveform whatsoever and it, even if I use my rather obnoxious fan in order to overload the unit we can uh, hang on I'm not used to using these fancy ones we can there we go keep an eye on the maximum output voltage and OMS output voltage now the maximum voltage is somewhat high this should just be about uh, 325 volts so it's a bit weird that it's uh, that high but it's not uh, something I'm majorly concerned about it could just be the scope doing some incorrect math now if I just uh, overload the unit slightly by flipping this uh, heater into high we can coax the UPS into clipping and we can if we zoom in a bit even see the clipping harmonics starting to grow there so rally I'll turn this off now So really, this much more modern tool, which has dual capability of verifying itself, seems to be telling me that my distortion meter over there is lying to me. Now, when I did my original test on this unit, I was uh, using the monitor outputs to the left there to feed my scope, so I'm not sure whether or not it's the scope or the distor distortion meter that was messing with me but I would suspect that it's the distortion meter indeed I, I'm fairly certain that if I were to hook my analog scope to the output of this unit it would read just fine as well but there's really no need to do this do that since I've spent a fair amount of time already zooming in and out and verifying that indeed this UPS is working just fine even if we zoom right in and examine all, all parts of the waveform we really just have a very slight ripple there right at the top of the waveform but that's that's beyond acceptable 
what we saw on the analog scape was essentially noise that went several divisions down. We had noise or distortion all the way down here at the peak and way, way, way up uh, above the ma supposed maximum voltage of the output. And uh, this scape is a well, it says 50C on the front, but I believe it's a 100 MHz firmware one, so if there was any high frequency noise, we would know about it. I mean, this scope has five times the bandwidth of my analog one. So... It's strange. I can't imagine there being any ground loops or anything that would have caused that problem with the distortion meter, since these UPSs are entirely isolated from the grid. Even I'm using these two transformer coupled power supplies to power the thing, and they are entirely isolated from ground. They are among the most isolated devices I know, and uh, these also have a transformer coupled output. So, rather, there's no way of any ground issues whatsoever in this system. There's just too much isolation going on for that to be viable. So it's really really tricky. The distortion meter also has fairly low input impedance. I think it's a 600 ohm input. So it shouldn't be very susceptible to picking up noise from the unshielded test lead I used. And above all, it shouldn't be reading excess voltage for no reason. Hmm, very strange. I I should actually hook that back up and see if I can repeat the problem. Ah, and check this out. We're now hooked up through the distortion analyzer with the Rigel scope hooked up to the monitor output and also using the ungrounded power lead that my analog scope normally uses. And we can already, without any load on the UPS, see that our output waveform is very, very ugly. Now look what happens when I turn the load on. That looks absolutely horrible. <laughs> Now the curious, most curious thing about of all is that the voltage meter on the distortion meter seems to be very affected by this as well, because right now with the load turned on, it's hovering around 250 volts. But what what happens when I switch the scope over to a grounded power lead? the voltage drops by about 10 volts. Hmm... Now, the waveform output is still isn't perfect, but it's a hell of a lot better. Which is very odd, but we've obviously tracked down our issue to the ground isolation between the monitor output on the distortion analyzer and the ground referenced signal input. Now, I am somewhat hesitant to connect the... to disconnect the ground uh, tie switch on this thing when I'm measuring high voltages like mains. Yep, the grounding of the output buffer amplifier or the monitor buffer amplifier is definitely what's setting up our measurements here. Because we're now measuring distortion at 10% full scale and uh, well that's a bit high actually there we go 3% full scale and we've got about 2% just over 2% distortion on the waveform of this UPS on the load and that's even with no low or high pass filtering so yeah this UPS is <laughs> performing very very well 2% distortion under about 50% load is more than you can ask for. And just to demonstrate that we actually are measuring properly, I can turn it up to the 10% full scale mark and force the UPS into clipping. And you will see 
of a distortion goose flying through the roof. Hmm. There we go. You can't always trust your gear to do what it's supposed to, I suppose. At least not when dealing with old gear like this. I mean, I thought I was c hooking everything up correctly, save for my scope being ungrounded, but uh, that's not the issue, because the problem persists, even though not as obviously, when the scope is grounded as it should be. So, there's obviously some kind of problem when uh, there's a huge voltage differential between the input and the output buffer, because this buffer scales it down to 1 volt RMS full scale, so there's a lot of voltage reduction going on. So, either something is up with that buffer amplifier, but I've never seen it perform poorly before, but like when I'm measuring audio amps and stuff, it's never acted up, it's always provided accurate output, and I have no reason to assume that it would have failed right now. And, yeah, all in all, it's just an unexpected issue. I would not have guessed that I would ever encounter this. I frankly am stumped as to what has happened. There's just some undoc unknown issue. Either undocumented or I'm not aware of it. But, the important thing is, I know about it now, and I'm going to do some more research in it. But, above all, this unit is working just as it should, and it's work performing admirably, admirably at that. And that's what I care about the most, because I really like these units, and I replaced the caps on it, so it would be a shame if, I, if it had some serious issue and I had to scrap it, which I obviously won't need to anymore. Hmm. It could possibly also be that there's some very strange ground loop coupled in some high frequency domain that causes this unit to perform poorly while it's being hooked up through these isolated devices and these well these unisolated devices because the one prong of the output of the UPS it is grounded through the distortion analyzer it shouldn't matter since it, that is the only ground point in the system but uh, if there's some uh, for instance Y capacitors in these which uh, give some very slight coupling to ground which there shouldn't be they should be as far as I'm aware entirely uh, transformer coupled there should be no connection whatsoever to either case or ground from the output. They are not intended to be consumer devices so they don't really follow too many of the uh, consumer standards that you usually find in power by such as Y capacitors connecting your main your face to your ground and so forth. These should be entirely clean and the output voltage is definitely clean there, there's no question about that. <laughs> Endless speculation. Either way, I've rambled on for long enough. My UPS works. My test gear doesn't work properly. Oh well. On a funny ending side note, I noticed that uh, while doing some durability testing, uh, this hole wasn't really tapped properly. So it was, was a bit of an edge rising up, very harshly limiting the contact of this transformer wire to the heat sink and the result of that one very charred washer that thing's carried all the current throughout all the years of this UPS and it still survived good build quality, bad build quality <laughs> I suppose it's one can drink for another well, as another funny side note, uh, after I fixed that bad connection issue, uh, I 
put a 550-ish watt load on the unit and uh, I well I boosted it up by running an 850 watt load for a while until the fats got to about 70 degrees and then I took 200 watts off 8, 7, well six, it's running a 650 watt load and the temperature is dropping now the case is off but the temperature of this is maturing the temperature of the trans transistors and really 70 degrees you have a 20 degree headroom on that if you really want to push it so I'd almost say that this thing in its stock passively cooled edition is basically able to deliver 650 watts continuously and I, now I say basically because if you really want to push it and hook up some huge batteries this transformer is going to get a bit toasty it's probably been running for uh, the equivalent of an hour or so now and it's starting to get a bit too warm I'm going to end this test in a bit but yeah that, that is impressive performance for a passively cooled UPS very impressive I think it might be in part because APC on these older units decided to uh, occupy all of the transistors, all 16 of them on the heat sinks whereas the newer smart UPS mo models which essentially replaced these only have 8 of them uh, installed unless it's one of the super high power versions so if you want to have a UPS that you want to hack and put bigger batteries into, as I'm planning to do with one of these, uh, you really have a prime candidate here. The Smart UPS 1400 is also good, it also has all the transistors mounted, but it has these much smaller heat sinks. However, it does have a fan cooling instead. So, which one you want to go with? Eh, I suppose it depends on how large batteries you want to run, and uh, how much you care about fan noise because again this thing is running entirely passively I mean aside from slight humming noise and the beeping which can be disabled by some means it's just a very quiet unit I mean most of the noise in this room is coming from my power supplies so yeah Batch UPS Pro 1400, one of my favourite units, and definitely gets a thumbs up after this, especially after not being broken. Cheerio! Also, as a final ending note, if you want to change the charging voltage on these units, you can't do it through software. You need to install a pass bypass resistor across R118. I've used an 8 mega ohm resistor right here which uh, gives me a charging voltage of 27.25 volts which is about 13.6 something volts per battery which is eh, okay I usually shoot for 13.6 and that resistor is right there right beside IC14 which is the charge controller IC which I also believe to be APC custom 